like to call to order the plan zone meeting for Danpour, Tuesday, November 16th. I want to thank everybody for their attendance tonight. We will start off with our regular meeting. We do not have a public hearing. Roll call, Commissioner Tallman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Schneider? Here. Lammers? Present. Johnson's excused. Tallman here. Ingram? Present. Hepner? Here. Bransgard? Here. Reinhardt's? Here. Manus? Here. Garrington's excused and Stulk. I'm here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. Report of City Council activity. Laura? Um, so tonight, the Speedway final plat is on consent. Um, so it, that one will be expected to pass. And then um, the zoning text changes and rezoning associated with City Center around the, the mall, um, that will have its second consideration is on consent at the City Council. I'm sorry, I'm a week behind. It had its cons it was approved last Wednesday for its second consideration. So we're going into its third consideration um, and anticipated approval on November 23rd for both the city center and um, the zoning text changes. Thank you, Laura. Secretary's report. Move the report. The secretary's report has been moved and seconded as printed. All those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, it will stay as printed. Comp plan, Laura, anything? Um, so we had a landowner come in like two weeks ago um, to talk to us about some land that uh, is on the urban fringe that we are discussing um, what, what to do with that land. Um, so there will likely here pretty soon um, be an item related to that coming before you. Thank you. That being said, we will go down to zoning activity. I see nothing. Subdivision activity. We have four items tonight. Commissioner Tallman. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first case is P21-06, request of CNL Plaza for a preliminary plat of Prairie Point 2nd Edition for a 45 lot subdivision on 19.26 acres located north of East 58th Street and east of Eastern Avenue. Staff recommends the Planning and Zoning Commission forward P21-06 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the fo following findings and five listed conditions. I so move. Case number P21-06 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Laura, Matt, Matt. So uh, the, on the screen before you could see the subject property, just over 19 acres of land highlighted in yellow. Uh, it's to the east of Eastern Avenue, so across from Prairie Heights Park and Eastern Avenue Library. And to the east of the site is a city-owned detention pond, uh, which is already existing today and has been sized accordingly to accommodate this development. The land is zoned uh, R3, which is consistent with the adjacent residential neighborhoods to the north, south, and east. And then it is shown as residential general on our future land use map, which is also consistent with the surrounding area. So before you, we have the proposed preliminary plat. There are two forms of access to this site, one being off of Eastern Avenue and then the other to the south, Indigo Avenue currently stubs out to the undeveloped site. So that will be extended north to meet up with the proposed roadway. And then we have three different cul-de-sacs. So stormwater drainage will be sent to the east to that city owned detention pond. Um, all the proposed lots meet the zoning requirements for lot area and lot width. Uh, the street right away is proposed as 27 feet uh, back of curb to back of curb. So given that narrow width, uh, staff will be recommending a condition that parking be limited to one side of the street and that parking not be allowed within the cul-de-sacs. So in terms of findings, uh, the plat conforms with our comprehensive plan and it prepares the area for future development and that the plat with conditions will achieve consistency with subdivision requirements. So staff is recommending approval 
uh, subject to conditions. Um, condition three I haven't brought up yet. Um, it's just to add a note stating that sidewalks will be uh, required upon construction of each uh, single family lot and that the sidewalks along Eastern Avenue be constructed be constructed with the completion of roadway paving. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, do you have any questions at this time? Commissioner Lammers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I've, I've asked this question before, but it's been a couple years. Um, when a condition that addresses sidewalks is noted, I always wondered why we didn't specify that that was the um, developer's responsibility or the city's responsibility. I think I always felt like it leaves it open for potential conflict. And um, at the time, they said that they would start specifying, but this isn't specified. So I just wondered how I should be thinking on this. Is it automatically assumed a condition is always the developer's responsibility? Um, so in the case of the Eastern Avenue sidewalk, it is the developer's responsibility. Um, so we will um, hold up accepting the infrastructure improvements until that sidewalk has been installed on Eastern Avenue. Um, it would be um, on a case-by-case -case basis as houses are constructed for the sidewalks within, within the streets that are developed on the lot or so ordered by the city. So if there is a lot that doesn't sell, um, we can order it to be installed. That would be at the expense of the owner of that lot um, at that time. Um, so it, it is, it's kind of a mix between both the homeowner's responsibility and the developer's responsibility. Okay, I just, I don't wanna leave anything open for um, confusion or, or argument or anything like that. And this is the one thing that never really gets clarified. And will people know what you just stated? Will people, let's say this commission leaves and you guys leave, the next round comes, will they understand that to be true? Or is there you know, something to be gained by specifically specifying who's responsible for it? Um, so it's something we do in our civil uh, review of projects as well as our individual site plan review. So it's something, it's required by ordinance, so we make sure it happens, uh, and, and it depends on the project. Um, so uh, in, in this case, the sidewalks on Eastern will be required um, from the get-go, and a lot of that is because those lots would be less, there would be more expense for somebody buying those properties because they have two sets of sidewalks that right. would need to be installed. Right. Um, so that's why when you have a double frontage on a main road, that's our policy moving forward to ensure that those um, sidewalks get installed. So it, it, it is a combination, but we do ensure that it happens. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Lammers. Commissioner Reinhardt. Thank you. Um, My question is, how long do we wait uh, in, say, some of these new developments that are going in where it's kind of spotty where homes are and there are vacant lots and there's no sidewalks there and people want to walk the neighborhood or their kids want to play in. How long do we wait before we tell somebody that, we have, that they have to put in a sidewalk even though it's a vacant lot? Um, I don't have an answer for you, but I can ask the Public Works Department uh, and, and get back to you on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. Would the, at this time, would the petitioner's representative like to explain your project and take any potential questions from the commission? Mike Richmond with Townsend Engineering. Is there a microphone? No, it's uh, overhead. Oh, okay. You're good. Um, the land surveyor with this project. Um, I don't have much to add besides the summary from Matt, except we are changing the street width to 31 feet back a curb, back a curb. Um, the 27 feet was an artifact of another preliminary plat that was kind of um, accepted years back. So we're widening it out. So I think that a um, condition should be taken off at some point about the street parking. And then we're going to revise the size of the cul-de-sacs to meet the new suit S. Um, requirements as well, so they'll be a little bit bigger also. 
Commissioners have any questions? Commissioner Tallman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just out of curiosity, more than anything, on the plat that we're looking at, I don't think in all my years here I've ever seen so many contours, finished contours along the sides of the road. I'm just curious, does this road, do all these roads kind of then sit up high and then flow back into the lots, or what, what would that profile look like? It's, or did uh, Chris just get a new layer on his software and he wants to show it off? I think it's a software deal. <laughs> we are uh, finalizing the grading plan, so we pretty much just designed the roadways there, and they'll tie into, we're going to try to tie it into existing grade, but I, that's just um, more or less a road profile and not a full development. Okay, I just totally, I, I saw that. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> How do you build on some of those? But anyway, thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. Commissioners, any additional questions at this time? Laura, do we need to consider his request on that condition regarding? I, I would say keep it in for now. And then so this is just a preliminary right, plat. So right. it'll it'll come back as a final. And then if it's 31 feet back to back at that time, then we that condition won't apply. Okay. I, I was, you took the words right out of my mouth, Perfect. considering well, it's preliminary. Yeah. Oh. Uh, but that should not change the right of way width, correct? So it, it won't be reflected on the final plat, but it will be on our construction plans. So. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any final questions from commissioners? Would anybody in the audience like to step forward and speak? Final call for questions. Seeing none, roll call please. Commissioner Tallman. Schneider. Yes. Lammers. Yes. Tallman, yes. Hepner? Yes. Bransgarden? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Manus? Yes. And Stalk? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Chairman. Next case is F21-12, request of XL Development LLC for a final plat of West Lake Business Park, 5th edition, for an eight-lot subdivision on 11.03 acres located east of Lewis Rich Court. Staff recommends the Plan Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F21-12 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the listed findings and the listed seven conditions. And I so move. Second. Case number F21-12 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Matt? Okay, so this is a 11-acre parcel located in the Westlake Industrial Park. So this is... Uh, to the west of Interstate 280 and north of 160th Street. Um, this site is currently being developed as commercial storage units. It's zoned for light industrial, and then to the east of the interstate is agricultural, located on the bounds of the city limit as well. Future land use, land use plan shows this area as in, uh, industry as well. So here we have our um, proposed final plat. So the way that the site's currently being developed is that there's a commercial storage building on each of the lots. And so su subdividing the plat will put one building per lot to um, differentiate ownership. Um, each lot will be a flag onto Lewis Rich Court and they will share a common access drive to access the building and the public right away. And then stormwater detention will be managed on outlot uh, one, which is in the northwest corner of the final plat. So staff is recommending um, the Plan and Zone Commission accept the listed findings and forward the case to City Council for approval. So again, the findings, the uh, plat conforms with our comprehensive plan and prepares the area for future development. And it also is consistent with our subdivision requirements. Uh, so the conditions are fairly standard. Um, really, we just have a couple of extra ones added on there pertaining to drainage easements and stormwater management, but otherwise they're fairly standard. Matt, is it understood that all these services need to be hard surface? It is, yes. yes. I, mean, I didn't remember reading that necessarily, but. So the site plan has been, the site plan review has been completed and it is all hard surface. 
Thank you. As there are numerous businesses out there where they're not, and I wanted to make sure that this didn't perpetuate. Thanks. I appreciate it, Laura. Commissioners, any questions before I request the petitioner's representative? Seeing none, would uh, you like to step up again, please, Mike? I have nothing to add except um, with all just to clarify those flags. We initially um, were trying to get a city right away in there and in discussions with the city, they didn't want to accept right away. And then we thought about making it all condo lots. And <clears> um, but due to financing, he thought subdivision was best. So then that's why we have all those flags going to Lewis Ridge Court and then any access easement through there. So beyond that, I'll take any questions if you have any. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? I'm seeing none. Would anybody in the audience like to speak on this petition? Final call from anybody? Seeing none. Commissioner Tallman, roll call, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lammers? Yes. Tallman, yes. Hepner? Yes. Bransgard? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Manus? Yes. Stelk? Yes. Ben Schneider? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next case is F21-13, request a spear development on behalf of Windsor Crest Apartments Cooperative for a final plat of Win Windsor Hills second edition for a one lot subdivision on six acres located at 4826 Jersey Ridge Road. <clears throat> Staff recommends the Planning Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F21-13 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the listed seven conditions. And I so move. Case number F21-13 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Matt? Okay, so this final plat as well as the next item on our agenda are um, related to one another and they're for the purpose of facilitating a transfer of land from Spear Commercial, which is the property that abuts 53rd Street, and then transferring the portion of land that's closest to um, the Windsor Crest Apartments, which has access off of Jersey Ridge Road. So the two pieces of property are delineated between a wetland area, which makes that piece harder to develop for Spear Commercial. So the purpose is to transfer the land for Windsor Crest uh, Apartments to build a couple more apartment buildings. Um, it's zoned for residential multifamily, this portion of the property, which is uh, consistent with uh, the current development. And then it's also shown as residential general on our future land use plan. Um, so here's the proposed final plat, uh, which would transfer that area south of the wetlands from Spear to Windsor Crest. Um, and then that portion would then be replatted uh, into lot one of Windsor Crest um, initial subdivision. So you would have a new developable area that would have access out to Jersey Ridge Road through the existing private drive network. Um, so staff is recommending approval of the case subject to uh, findings and conditions. So uh, once again, the plat conforms with our comprehensive plan and prepares the area for future development and then it is consistent with our subdivision requirements. And staff are recommending seven conditions, which are uh, fairly standard. Uh, one of the conditions, though, is that a landscape buffer yard shall be installed upon development um, in accordance with our zoning ordinance. So whenever you have multifamily development abutting a single family neighborhood, uh, upon development, staff requires a landscape buffer yard. So we're adding that onto the plat. And then, um, yeah, there's just general comments about stormwater management and adding signature lines for utilities. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Reinhardt. Yeah, here we go. Um, what about the potential impact this um, development's going to have? on the wetlands that butts up right against it. Um, is it going to 
get any more water than it already gets now? <clears throat> So it would be held to our same storm water management ordinance. Um, so I think there's a comment in our in our plat that um, it is likely that this plat will have to detain on site based off of um, topographies. So uh, it would slow the release rate um, into the wetlands. So um, it, it would be our standard nor uh, standard development type. Uh, expectations and and then any any touching of the actual wetlands would need to be approved by the um, by the core at the time are they using the uh, hundred year storm uh, analysis for the amount of water that they anticipate showing up in the wetlands yep we, we use the standard calculations at, that are at the statewide set um, as part of that and then we have uh, actually more restrictive release rate associated with that Okay, fine. Thank you. Any additional questions at this time? Seeing none, would the petitioner's rep please step up? Again? Again. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So in regard to the wetlands, the um, detention basin that was approved for Spear Commercial also will facilitate this portion of this um, addition because it was sized for the whole spear commercial initially. So any stormwater from that portion of um, Windsor Hills will be piped to that detention basin and will bypass the wetlands. So everything that is run off from any new hard surface will go right at the detention basin and that's released directly into the creek. So it's not going to be really filtered through those wetlands. So I don't anticipate a major impact and we have to avoid them with any construction or disturbance. So. The amount of water that's going to be diverted is going to go into the detention pond then? Correct, yes. Okay, and you've done the calculation to figure out the detention pond is large enough to handle? Yeah, we already sized it previously for the amount of hard surface anticipated, I think 80% on a commercial development for Spear first. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Any additional comments? I, I have none. Any questions from the commission? Would anybody in the audience like to step forward? Seeing none, thank you, Mike. Final questions, final call? Seeing none, roll call please, Commissioner Tallman. Tallman, yes. Hepner? Yes. Bransgard? Yes. Reinhardt? Yes. Manus? Yes. Stelk? Yes. Schneider? Yes. And Lammers. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Final case is F twenty one dash fourteen request to Spear Development on behalf of Ed Spear Construction Inc. and Sheila M Spear Living Trust for a final plat of Spear Commercial Park Second Edition for a one lot subdivision on seventeen point six nine acres located south of East Fifty Third Street and east of Spring Street. Staff recommends the Planning Zoning Commission accept the listed findings and forward case F21-14 to the City Council with a recommendation for approval subject to the listed conditions and, I'm sorry, listed findings and listed six conditions. I so move. Case F21-14 has been moved and seconded for discussion. Matt? Okay, so this is the, the northern portion of that uh, plat. Uh, highlighted in yellow, so it has frontage along 53rd Street, and then that southern portion has been transferred now to Windsor Crest, uh, pending approval by City Council. Um, so you could see on our zoning map, this is a split zone parcel. Uh, there's the portion on the northwest that is zone C2, which is a corridor commercial district, and then the western I'm sorry, the eastern and southern portion is zoned for residential multifamily. The C2 portion also has zoning conditions that were carried over from a previous ordinance, um, basically protecting the residential to the south from uh, impacts from automotive uses uh, largely. So we do have a split zone parcel of land and that's also reflected on our future land use plan between a commercial corridor and then the residential general. 
Um, in addition, you do also have a creek that runs along the northeast corner or line of this development. Um, so here is our proposed final plat. So it transfers, well, the Windsor Crest one transferred that southern portion south of the wetlands to Windsor Crest. So now we have the balance of the site. Um, it's currently two separate parcels. There's a C2 parcel and an RMF parcel. This plat combines them into one. So we do have a split zone parcel. And then the detention pond and wetlands on this portion of the site are now placed into an outlet um, to protect those areas from development and to remain untouched. Um, so staff is recommending approval of the proposed final plat. Uh, once again, it conforms with our comprehensive plan and prepares the area for future development. Uh, we are recommending six conditions uh, one of which being that the plat delineate the boundary line between the commercial district and the RMF district um, to further clarify for future development. And then um, we're also requesting that a note be added to the plat to highlight the zoning ordinance that was passed previously, whose conditions still apply to this site. Thank you, Matt. Commissioners, any questions? Commissioner Lammers. I just have a curiosity question. Um, who oversees, when we have something like this, who oversees that encroachment doesn't happen on one lot or the other? You know, that um, the multi-family thing doesn't come over into the light um, industrial by X amount of feet because they can, because nobody's paying attention. So that would be us um, as our site plan review. So that's something that we do double check to make sure that only allowed uses happen within the appropriate zoning district. And that as a project is proposed, that's what we would review. Um, one of the reasons that, um, so we do allow multifamily in commercial districts. So really the only crossover is we wouldn't uh, permit a commercial property on the residential piece. So um, that, that's something that we would be looking at as development occurs. Okay, and then as, um, and I, because they are different, is there any barriers, requirements in place? So it, in industrial to residential, will the same requirements still exist? So it's the same standard uh, requirements in our zoning code. So if something does develop on that C2 property, they would be required to put that buffer um, landscaping in okay. associated with it. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Any additional questions? Would the petitioner's representative like to step forward? <laughs> Again. <laughs> It's a busy month. Um, I have nothing to add, but I'll entertain any questions. Commissioners, any questions? Hate to see Mike stand up here for no reason. Actually, kind of related to the zoning, um, we combined that lot to market it better, and we anticipated that if a potential buyer may try to rezone a portion of the northerly um, part of the lot for all commercial, but we didn't want to make that change now ahead of time depending on what their use would be. So we left it as is, so. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Mike. Anybody else in the audience like to step forward? Seeing none, final call for questions. Seeing none, Commissioner Tallman, roll call please. Hepner. Yes. Bransgard. Yes. Reinhardt's. Yes. Manus. Yes. Stelp? Yes. Schneider? Yes. Lammers? Yes. Tallman, yes. Motion carries, and that concludes the report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. Future business, staff? Uh, we will be having a November 30th meeting. We have three subdivision plats for you to review at that meeting. Thank you, Laura. Any additional communications from anybody? Oh, I will also add that we have set our meeting dates for 2022. We will get those out to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Laura. Any other business? 
Anybody? Seeing none? Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor of adjournment, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you again for your attendance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.